you should write a theory of personality. You already have lots of ideas about people and why we act as we do. Writing it down will clarify your thoughts and feelings. It will give you a home base to start from. Let's make a deal. If you write a theory of personality, I'll write one too. And we'll agree that they don't have to be perfect. They're just an expression of our thoughts. And they don't have to be created from scratch. We can incorporate other people's ideas. And they don't have to be permanent. We can change them when needed. So these are temporary expressions of what we think about people. It's kind of a quick and easy version of personality theory, not thought to be a formal, this is the way I believe it will be and will always be forever. Obviously, your theory will be completely up to you. It can be as detailed or as short as you wish. You can state your theory in one sentence. I agree with Freud on everything. But if you're going to give all the theories consideration, I doubt something that short will do the job. My theory is 24 pages long, but I like writing. As a guide, I suggest you aim for half that, say 10 to 12 pages. Since writing your theory can be a major undertaking, here are some suggestions I found helpful. As much as possible, a theory should be clear. Clarity doesn't make a theory itself good, but it helps other people understand what you mean. They may not agree, but at least you and they will know why. Second, I generally assume that the fewer assumptions you make, the better. Every theory makes assumptions, but if you have a choice, try to use as few as possible. Combining these two ideas together, being clear about your assumptions will go a long way to achieving your goal of writing a theory of personality. Even if that's all you accomplish, it'll be a major achievement. You will undoubtedly want to describe how your theory matches and or differs from more famous theorists. Your list might include Freud, Adler, Jung, Allport, the Neo-Freudians such as Erickson, Anna Freud, and the object relations folk, Pavlov and Watson, Skinner, social learning theories such as Dollar de Miller, Rotter, and Bandura, and there's humanism with Maslow and Rogers, and existentialism with Frankel and May, and don't forget the cognitive folk, Kelly, Beck, and Ellis. That's a lot of people. But that means that others may have addressed the questions and issues you think are important. To see if your theory applies well to real life, add a section on how your theory could be used in counseling. In particular, consider how your theory would address these questions. Why do people stay in bad relationships? Why do people keep picking the same kind of people to fall in love with? How would you help someone who has a fear of flying? Why do people try to be perfect? How do you break a habit? How do you help people with marriage problems? Why would a woman leave her husband yet hope he would pursue her? Why would a man be afraid of his wife? What is your opinion on repressed memories, projective tests, and dream analysis? And include, of course, anything else that you can think of. It's your theory. But I don't want you to feel like you're alone in this. Having given you some ideas of what should be included in your theory of personality, it seems only fair for me to have to share my version. And then, after writing your theory, check to see what I cover well, what I cover poorly, and what I ignore altogether. Theories are great fun because they are never perfect, never complete, and never useless. They're like intellectual Play-Doh. If you mess up, just pinch it, squish it, and start all over again. Think of personality as a summary of what we know about people. So let me start with this, my short version of personality. There are two great principles in psychology. People have a tremendous capacity to change, and they usually don't. That's it. That's my wisdom. We're pretty consistent. We might be less impulsive when we're old, but probably not by much. We tend to do the same things in the same situations. We tend to act the same way when around the same people. We are remarkably reliable. You can almost always count on us to be the same as we've always been. That's why we shouldn't expect the person we're dating to change dramatically when we're married. We're unlikely to reform them or to change them, and they're unlikely to change us. Yet we can change, and do. Sometimes we make dramatic, gigantic leaps forward. We grow up, wise up, sober up, and shake up our lives. We have the capacity. We have the ability. So why don't we? That's really what personality is about. What holds us together? Why are we so consistent? It's been a while since I've read my theory, and even longer since I wrote it. So I won't be offended if you disagree with me. Give me your reactions. After all, the real issue is what you think personality is. As for my theory, it's too long to put the whole thing in a video. So go to psychnet.com and click on personality. Or go directly to psychnet.com slash personality. 
It's Sagnet because I'm nuts about personality. So read my theory and then give me your reaction. What do you think personality is?